Disclaimer. This is independent research that is not connected to any government agency involved with the X-37 program. Hello again, star fans. This is the X-37 Space Program Explained Part 3. This episode will cover the space plane's defensive capabilities. The X-37's propulsion utilizes a hull thruster ion engine system providing higher velocities than traditional propulsion with a sustained thrust allowing the spacecraft to reach 50 to 60 kilometers per second much faster than standard satellites orbiting around 8 to 17 kilometers per second providing a far more efficient way of remaining in the right locations within an orbit. The xenon gas is far lighter than traditional rocket fuel with greater storage density allowing longer usage of thrust combined with increased velocity allowing the X-37s to maneuver between low and high earth orbit trajectories. This flexibility of shifting orbits allows close and continuous surveillance of conflict zones that arise anywhere on the planet, along with monitoring activity of adversary satellites in orbit, both in terms of optical imaging and electronic intelligence signals gathering. It can also fill a gap if satellites are badly positioned to respond to short notice events like a nuclear test in North Korea. The xenon gas can also be utilized for RCS thrusters to perform close maneuvering and matching trajectories with other orbital platforms or satellites. The X-37 also has the capability to recharge the xenon fuel cells by switching the spacecraft to sleep mode utilizing the solar panels to collect charged electron particles through an energy conversion process system. The X-37 also has conventional fuel modules for the RCS maneuvering thrusters that also can be utilized to power the main engine dual purpose thruster. This advanced capabilities to switch between ion and conventional main thrust drastically extends the time frame for an orbital mission. The Centaur 5 upper stage booster has the additional capability as a refueling station. After it deploys the X-37, it can continue to high earth orbit trajectory where it remains. The X-37 orbital vehicle can rendezvous and dock to refuel its RCS thruster tanks. Inside the booster stage is a vacuum collection valve that absorbs excess propellant and fumes in a storage section that the X-37 can utilize as a reusable orbital gas station attaching and refilling its RCS thruster tanks. Currently, the OTV-6 mission under the U.S. Space Force is testing the upgraded Centaur booster stage that added a xenon gas top storage cylinder to refill the Hall ion thruster power cells on the X-37B spacecraft. With the addition of the Boeing Starliner and SpaceX Dragon unmanned cargo missions, the International Space Station also has the capability to refill the X-37B in low orbit now that U.S. contracted spacecraft can deliver the classified fuel, drastically expanding the orbital vehicle's capabilities to perform more maneuvers between orbits. Now that the spacecraft does not have to only rely on recharging the fuel cells via the solar panel electrical charging system. Now for threat response capabilities. 
to deter adversaries counter space threats like anti-satellite ASAT weapons, reconstruction of space capabilities after an adversary's anti-satellite attack is an essential aspect of space defense. Matching this threat by launching low-cost CubeSat means the U.S. can rapidly replace lost capabilities after an attack in which numerous ASAT missiles from other countries hit multiple space targets, causing a debris chain reaction destroying most, if not all, of low-orbital space assets similar to what happened in the movie Gravity, where Earth's main orbit is destroyed by space junk. Leaving high Earth orbit the only option to redeploy lost assets. The X 37s had the ability to operate and maneuver in a degraded space environment to mitigate the effects of losing access to space capabilities through rapid deployment of hundreds of CubeSats. Keeping our military's GPS tracking, advanced missile warning, and strategic communication networks functioning from high orbit. CubeSats are about 1 to 2 square feet in diameter and are designed to be deployed in mass of 100 or more to secure national defense orbital networks to remain operational through CubeSat rapid deployment capabilities. Next is dealing and managing space junk. Today there is over 3,000 defunct satellites and spent booster stages traveling 10 to 20,000 miles per hour or basically large missiles that can completely destroy an active satellite if they collide. This might sound like an urgent problem, but Earth's orbit is extremely large and collisions are rare due to actively tracking these objects and deploying orbital assets on trajectories to avoid any collisions. But within the last 15 years, the US, China, Russia, and India have launched over two dozen anti-satellite missile tests targeting dead satellites. Yes, scientists warn every ASAT test is like playing Russian roulette that could trigger a cascading space junk domino effect splitting 3,000 large chunks into 50,000 smaller junk missiles. Managing large space objects is another defensive capability of the orbital vehicle space program. In high orbit, the X-37 can perform a thrust nudge with a robotic arm sending an old satellite into deep space. A similar process can be used in low orbit with a controlled atmospheric re-entry over the South Pacific Ocean. Back in January 15 of 2012, a failed Russian Mars probe, the Phobos Grunt, was in a decaying low Earth orbit as a system malfunction prevented it from leaving on its journey to Mars. The Russian Federal Space Program claimed its trajectory was altered by a U.S. spacecraft causing the capsule to break up over the South Pacific. At the time, the X-37B OTV-3 mission was in orbit and was capable of deorbiting the failed probe. Yet Russia has not released its trajectory readings but still claim it was brought down by a US spacecraft. Okay, star pals. So this episode we covered the X-37 space program's operational and defense system capabilities. And next time, we will examine the X-37 Orbital Vehicle Offensive Capabilities. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more channel content and video expeditions. Peace out. Thank you.